In order to style some of your tags or elements, as we also refer to them as, we can use something called CSS. CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. And what that means is that styles will apply to other objects that are inside um, higher up tags. So for example, we could create a rule for the body and that rule will cascade down onto other elements such as headings, for example. So this hierarchical approach is something you'll see in just a moment. But before we do that, we need to create a file in order to store that information. This is known as a style sheet. So if you go to File New and then select CSS as the page type and go to Create. In CSS, by default in Dreamweaver, you'll see a character set and also a single example of a comment. A comment in CSS is something written with forward slash star, then whatever you want to write, and then star forward slash to end it. So a comment in code is simply something that uh, won't be executed. But if you want to write comments as you go along, it might be a good idea to help you refer back to stuff. So this is our style sheet. And what we need to do before we do anything with it is to save it. So go to File and Save As. And I'm just going to call this Styles. You'll notice again I'm saving into our root folder. And once you've done that, it should appear in the file browser on the right hand side. Then in order to make sure that our style sheet applies to our HTML page, switch back to the HTML by clicking on the tab at the top of Dreamweaver and then we need to link those two together. So we can use Dreamweaver to do this for us, but what we'll do is look at what it writes after we've done it. So if you have a look at the CSS styles window at the bottom, you'll see a button that says attach style sheet. It looks like a little chain link icon. When you click on that, you can browse to the file and select it, or because it's in the same folder as our index page, you could just type in the file name. Click on OK and it will write the relevant HTML code to link the HTML file to the style sheet. And that is a link tag. So in the link tag we have three parameters. href, so which file to use, the relationship, which is a style sheet, and the type of information we're receiving, text slash CSS. So Dreamweaver writes that in and it's another example of a self-closing tag. So I'm going to save my HTML file and switch back to my style sheet. So now any information I place into my style sheet is directly linked to my HTML. So what I'm going to do first of all is to take a look at writing a basic uh, rule. So if I wanted to write a rule for any of these elements I'd address it first off by addressing the tag. So that's one of three ways that you could write a rule in CSS. So for example, if I wrote a rule for body, I would write the name of the tag. I'd open a uh, squiggly bracket like that. Again, another thing that's not got a particularly uh, useful name for it. Um, but we'll call the, them that or a parenthesis perhaps. Um, and into that we can pass in whatever settings we want to have uh, for that element. So the body element contains all of the other elements on the page. So we might use that to set an overall style for our fonts. So for example, we might say font hyphen family is Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. Now in this example, what you can see is that Dreamweaver separates them into groups of several fonts at once. That's because these fonts are similar looking, okay? So if the computer can't find Arial, it will find Helvetica. If it can't find either of those two, it will default to Sans Serif, which is a system font. So the reason you're not seeing the list that you'd see if you were looking at uh, something like Word on your own local computer is that not everybody has that overall uh, list of fonts that you might have. So when you're working with fonts on the web, you have to uh, restrict yourself to something that you know other people will have. So I've written a rule for font family on the body. And if I save that and switch back to my HTML page, you can see that my um, design view shows the change that I've actually uh, made. So no changes have been made to the HTML. But what happens when the page loads is that it looks at the styles.css for how to display the body. 
and as a result everything in there has turned to the font Arial because it's found that on my computer and applied it. So that's basic use of applying uh, something to a tag. So if I wanted to say, um, for example, apply it to the paragraph tag. So I might write a rule for P for paragraph. Notice here that I'm not writing it like the HTML. There are not going to be any brackets like that. So for the paragraph, I might say, OK, well, we want the font color to be, um, let's just make it something that stands out. So for example, here, um, I've changed that to orange. Bear in mind that color here applies to font. I don't say font hyphen color. So again, I'll save that, change back. And you can see that my paragraph that says, if we had a sentence like this, has all turned to orange, but the rest of it hasn't. The rest is still in the default colors. So the anchor tag there is blue and underlined. So what if I wanted to write a rule for the anchor tag? I might write a rule that says the color of the font is something different. So I might make it a lime green and I might remove the underline and I can do that with text hyphen decoration none. So you can see there, when I look back at that, it changes that. So the, the great thing about CSS is that whenever we recreate one of those elements, it automatically assumes that style. So if I put in another paragraph in design view, you can see it's automatically got that same color. And if I were to link part of that, so for example, the word new, if I put a link in there, and I'll link it to an imaginary HTML page called something.html and close it there. You can see that the words new paragraph have been wrapped inside that A tag. So they've assumed the look of an A. Okay, so that's a basic usage of um, styling tags with CSS. But what if we wanted to do something a bit different? Well, I told you there were three ways. The second way is to use um, something called an ID. And in HTML terms, if you wanted this particular paragraph to look different to the other one, or let's say the first one to be different to any other paragraph, we could give it an ID. So an ID is a way of um, identifying a particular element versus its peers. So for example, this paragraph, we might need to be different to others. So I might give um, this paragraph an ID of uh, let's say um, red. So the word red I've written in there uh, just as an arbitrary term. Okay, It doesn't matter what you call ID names uh, as long as you don't put spaces in them and you don't start them with a number, they'll be fine. So I put in red there and then because it's an ID in CSS you put a hash symbol at the start and then I have to write it case sensitively so I'm going to put a capital R in there. So for red, I might want to make the color, you guessed it, red. And I might want to make the font size different to something else. So I'll give it an extra large font size of 24. So you can see that that paragraph is still a paragraph. So normally it would default to this orange look of this rule here. But because we've given it an ID, it's overruling the initial paragraph rule and adopting that red look and the size of 24. So an ID is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to write something called a class. So for example, if I put in another paragraph, um, what I can do is to put in a class. So a class is also a parameter. I could say class equals um, let's say uh, light blue, like that. And notice the way that I'm writing the name of that class with a lowercase letter first and then a capital afterwards. So if you're writing a phrase, start off with lowercase letter and then use capitals thereafter for the remaining words. It's quite a good system that you'll find a lot of people use. So light blue and in CSS, to start a class, you need a full stop. So for an ID, We'll just put in a comment here saying this is for an ID. 
and we'll put in a comment here saying this is for a class. Okay, so class in CSS terms always starts with a dot and we called that light blue. So in here, I'm going to put in color of light blue. Okay, bear in mind, we've just looked at how to do uh, font based changes to our elements so far. Um, in, a, in the next video, we'll look at how we can write a structure. And then after that, we'll go on to use CSS again in order to um, create the structure and control how the page layout works. Okay, so for now, this is just the three ways of writing um, basic CSS rules. So I'll put a comment at the top saying these are for tags. Okay, so the first set there, body, P and A are for tags. Then there's an example of an ID rule and then an example of a class. And if I save that and switch back, you can see that I've got a light blue paragraph there. Okay, so just some examples of how you can control using CSS any of the tags you might have in your HTML. And another thing to note at this point is that once you've linked uh, the, your HTML and your CSS together, Dreamweaver allows you to see those rules in the CSS panel in a list like this. And you can also edit them by double clicking on the rule and it will bring up this CSS rule definition window. This is where Dreamweaver categorizes um, most of the kind of common uses of CSS um, into a menu that you can use to pick stuff from. So, for example, if I wanted to change all of the default text um, color in the body rule, which I've just opened, I could set the color there, hit apply, and that allows me to test stuff out. So apply button uh, will apply what's what you've just changed allow you to see it in the background without closing that window and sort of confirming the change. So I could still hit cancel and it doesn't always work as you'd expect it to. Um, so if I go back to a dark color, that makes a bit more sense. Okay, so there is a way of using Dreamweaver to write some of the CSS for you. So for example, if I look back at my style sheet, you can see that it's now added in that rule for color that we didn't previously have in the body rule. So Dreamweaver will write some of the code for you, but you will have to understand how to write it. That's why I showed you writing the CSS first. So the next thing we'll do is move on to using division tags for uh, laying out areas on the page.